Welcome to the Stellar Cycles Pod, a show dedicated to guiding each woman towards her intrinsic power to steer her life, her cycle, her relationships, and her dreams. I cover feminine energy, reproductive health, and all things related to being a potent and magical being that is woman. I'm your host, Alina, and today our topic is winning your dream relationship. So we already did a part one for a cuffing season hacks last week, but there was just so much to go over that I had to make a part two. The goal of this episode is to show you the psychology behind dating and love and why it really is a game, despite what everyone says. I'm not here to show you tricks or how to manipulate your way into a relationship. Truly, that's not the goal. Instead, what I'm going to be talking about is how to stand your ground, keep your dignity, receive what you require, and most of all, have fun. Everything that's completely within your own control. Let's get into our updates first, and then we will continue the relationship hacks from last week with a part two. And if you hang in there, you'll not only walk away with ways to win your relationship, but I'll also include details of how Sam and I met and eventually got married. So my puppy Nova had her first training session this week. Just yesterday, she had her first day of school. The trainer actually came to our home and worked with us for about two hours. A lot of it was actually with me and Sam, and his approach is very different. So instead of taking the dog from you and training it and then giving it back, he actually teaches us the psychology and the behavioral therapy that comes with teaching a puppy how to behave. And a lot of it has to do with how their mother keeps them in check before they're taken away from the litter. So Nova wasn't that involved in this. This was, of course, mostly for me and Sam, but it was very interesting. Like he was showing us how to teach her boundaries, how to teach her not to climb all over us or our guests. And she's already picking it up so, so quickly. And the main point of it is you have to show them that you're the leader and not in a way that hurts them or that constantly rewards them with snacks, but in a way that they learn to submit to you and they feel so much more protected and chill because they know that you're protecting them. And the way you do that is by not letting them walk all over you, not letting them run your entire life. And it's so hard because she's so cute and she's such a little baby, but that's really not the point if you want a well-behaved, well-adjusted dog. So long story short, our trainer essentially taught us how to growl and kind of snap at them in the way that their mother does. And a lot of people think that this method is mean, but it really truly takes them back to their time when their mama was disciplining them. And they they listen to their mama. They respect their mama. They know exactly what to do because they feel protected. You know, dogs are pack animals, so they need to have a hierarchy. Otherwise, there's no order and everything just gets out of control. They experience anxiety and protectiveness because they don't feel that there's a protector in the group. So she's already picking it up so fast. We did a few little exercises with her. For example, if she's jumping on us or jumping on the furniture, we just do a loud clap and growl and she literally chills out. It's so interesting. And we don't have to hurt her. We don't have to reward her, which thank God, you know, I really don't want a dog that's conditioned to only know pain or food. So it's all energy. The way that you present your energy to them, they pick it up. So first training session was absolutely amazing. Also, I figured out my ear infection. My goodness. I told you guys they had me on these crazy antibiotics and I was going through the worst pain ever. I went to this ENT, Dr. Cornelius Jansen, and he figured it out. Out. So it turns out that it was actually a fungal infection. So what happens is fungus lives on basically every living surface. We all have it, but it's the bacteria, the good bacteria in our body that keeps it in check, keeps it from overgrowing. The antibiotics that the urgent care had me on killed off all of my good bacteria that were guarding my ear. Of course, the fungus proliferated and just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And urgent care was like, more antibiotics, stronger antibiotics. And I was like, no, let me go to a specialist and see what's up. And luckily, praise the Lord, they got me in very quickly. I mean, I was calling every day to look for openings, but he also sucked all of the gunk out and prescribed me some vinegar drops. And he said, this will rebalance your microbiome in your ear and everything will be back to normal in a week. And I can already hear better. So it's so, so good. I started a new quarter of teaching ultrasound. My first quarter was started in the summer. I started in July, ended in September, and that was a very fun group. I really got tight with the students, loved them so much. 
we were all learning together, honestly. And then we had a week of break. And this past Monday, we started a new quarter. And it was literally amazing. Our class is so much bigger, but there's these new instructors that came to join this quarter. And they are incredible. I'm truly so stoked to work with them. They're knowledgeable, experienced. The way that they teach the students and do the demos is just like, wow. And I can't wait to take this journey. I literally can't believe that I teach at a college. I don't know how this happened, but it's a lot, a lot of fun. Finally, Libra season is always kind of makeover season for me. I got a whole new wardrobe coming. I have fall pieces that I'm very excited about. You guys will only see me rocking black for the most part. That is my winter color. I'm just really excited to channel my inner Morticia Adams and just walk around in long drapey black dresses all the time. Doesn't matter where I'm going. I'm stepping out dressed. I invite you to join me. (laughs) Let's get into the episode. Picking up where we left off last, there was a lot of pointers on how dating presents a mental challenge to men who are built biologically to pursue and compete. If the challenge becomes too easy for them, they don't see it as quote unquote worth it and dip out to find something harder to conquer. You can win in dating and relationships if you're able to appeal to their biological need to win you over. After all, do you value something more when you've put in the work to earn it or when it was given to you freely? Yeah, you might appreciate it, but you're not going to be like, oh, I worked for this. I need to keep it. I need to maintain it. I need to protect it. Starting off with the first principle, the relationship you're in might not be right for you, girlfriend, if you find yourself jumping through hoops for him. In feminine energy, when something is right, when it's aligned, it feels so much easier for us and much more effortless. We get hung up a lot of times as women in thinking that we need to win men over the same exact way that they win us over. So men win us over by doing things for us, saying things to us, showing up, going out of their way. So then we think, oh, that's what gets us. This is what I need to do for him. But no, no, no. Men do not work that way. They do not fall in love with you based on how much you do for them. They fall in love with you based on how much they do for you. Because at that point, it's an investment to them. The next point is when you nag, he tunes you out no matter what it is. It just honestly gives you mother vibes like nagging, 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 nagging. Did you do this? Did you do that? When are you going to see me? When are we going to go here? Are you going to take me shopping? Are you going to take me on a date? He's done. He's out. But when you speak with your actions, he pays attention. What does it mean to speak with your actions? That means either being there or removing yourself, honestly. That's really the only two options that you can use for actions. And of course, if he tests you, like we were talking in the previous episode, if he's purposely not calling or texting you, again, that's testing you and you can respond with actions. It doesn't matter what kind of words you say, they respond to actions. Now, when a man takes a woman for granted, and we all know how this feels, he still looks for reassurance that she is still right there for him. He knows when he's taking you for granted. He knows when he's getting things out of you that he shouldn't be getting. But at the same time, he's still looking for ways that you're going to reassure him that you're still going to show up. You're still going to show up to the last minute dates. You'll still pick up his random phone calls. You'll answer back in a split second. Trust me, this is just his way of keeping you in his back pocket, but he's really pursuing way more interesting girls. When the routine becomes predictable, he's more likely to give you the same type of love he had for his mother. Why? Because a lot of men take their mother for granted. She'll always be there. He can always show up to her house and she'll cook for him. She'll give him a place to sleep. She might even take care of his bills and his debts. And the odds are that he will take you for granted in this situation are going to increase. Again, this goes back to like the more you do for them, the more they're going to take it for granted. Negative attention is still attention. So when he's not giving you any attention, that's still his way of letting you know that he has you right where he wants you. He doesn't have to give you attention. He doesn't have to take the time out of his day to plan a date for you. Why? Because he knows the minute he texts you, you're going to answer because you have nothing better going on in your life. Is that the way we want to be seen? I don't think so. Here's a little tip too, because even though it doesn't work for men that like, oh, you know, I wore him down and he started loving me. We hear plenty of stories about women where they're like, yeah, you know, like I just, I wasn't really feeling him at first. Honestly, I just saw him as a friend, but then eventually I just fell in love with him. And that's because when you treat him casually as though he's a friend, he'll come your way. If you don't immediately put him on a pedestal, like, oh, you're above all these other men. You're now my romantic partner. 
before he's even proven himself, that's it. Mental challenge gone. But if you treat him as a friend, he wants things to be romantic. No grown man wants to be your friend. He's looking for romance. He's looking for love too. But he also wants to be a pursuer. A little distance combined with the appearance of self-control makes him nervous that he may be losing you. It's like, what is she doing? Where is she? I haven't seen her in a bit. It gets their gears going and they're envisioning situations that they do not want to envision. Another man taking you out on a date. Another man taking you out on a trip. Another man taking you shopping. Another man, you know, helping you with things in life, decreasing your stress. And then he's like, "Uh uh-uh, I want to be that guy. I want to be that guy doing all of that for her. But when you're around all the time, there's no mystery. You're constantly updating him. You're constantly asking him, when are you going to hang out? He does not want to be a provider in this situation. A man takes a woman for granted when he's interested, but will no longer go out of his way for her because he doesn't need to. He's seen like, okay, this is the cap of the work that I need to do to get away with everything that I want. She'll do everything for me. She'll give herself to me. And then, yeah, guess what? Like he's still interested in the convenience of it, but he's not interested in winning you over. Going back to nagging, when you nag, you become the problem and he deals with it by tuning you out. How many of you have been in situations where either if you're verbally saying a lot to a man to try to get him to see your point or you're texting in paragraphs, do you get a response that you want? I bet you don't because it goes in one ear, out the other. They just don't respond to it. It reminds them of their mom. When you don't nag, it actually steers him to dealing with the problem. Trust me on this one. Have you ever dealt with a problem where you keep asking a man to do something and he just doesn't do it? And you're just like, no, this is like something that a man should do. I've been asking him to fix this thing in the closet. I don't know how many weeks, how many months already, and he just won't get around to it. Here's a secret. If you take his chores away from him and praise someone else for doing it, he's going to want his chores back. If he comes back and you're like, hey, babe, the handyman stopped by and he fixed the closet. I'm so excited. It's finally stable and nothing's falling off the shelves. I'm just so glad to have this done. He's going to be like, oh, wait, that praise belongs to me. Oh, wait, I didn't do the job. Then he's going to literally go out of his way to get things done just so he can receive the praise. Men are very basic, simple creatures. They just want They just want a little applause, a little approval, some pats on the back. They are geared to do things and accomplish things for women, not really for themselves. This world has men thinking that they're out here supposed to be living for themselves, making money for themselves, dating all these women, but they are truly, truly wired to accomplish and compete for women, and they get such a rush of dopamine and such a feeling of masculinity when their woman praises them. Every guy wants this. Every guy wants to be praised by a woman. So praise more when he does things correctly. Don't nag when he does things incorrectly. Just ignore him and get somebody else to do it better. He'll come around. When you nag, he just sees weakness. And he perceives an emotional woman as more of a pushover. Can we help that we're emotional? No, we can't. We as women, we feel like a roller coaster of emotions almost on a day-to-day basis. But we can keep it in check when we're around men because men are not emotional creatures. That's not how they communicate with each other. They communicate with each other with very few words and with actions more so than anything. So make sure that you're not acting out emotionally because that's just not going to hit the target with him. In the same way that familiarity breeds contempt... A slightly aloof demeanor can often renew his respect. If you're feeling that things are kind of getting stagnant, just be a little more aloof. Have something going on in your life that maybe you don't dish out a ton of details about. He's all of a sudden going to wonder, where is she? What is she doing? Um, Can she get back here like right now? But like I said, I'll always keep harping on this point. Having your own life that you're excited about, thrilling plans with your friends, that's going to make you so magnetic and so attractive. Honestly, this is just human nature, but he will forget what he has in you unless you remind him. And you don't have to be pushy or blatant about it, but just casually remind him that, hey, I have a great life. I have wonderful people around myself. And of course, this isn't going to happen verbally, but you remind him by way of being booked, busy, and blessed, and just very happy about everything going on, and then he's going to want to become the source of your happiness more so than any of those other things. 
Now, many women talk a lot out of nervousness, which is something that men will often perceive as an insecurity. Honestly, the less you say, the better. Let them dig into you. Don't give out all of your information at once. Of course, they're not communicative creatures like we are. So the less you talk, the more composed, the more deliberate you are with what you say, you're going to seem a lot more secure, a lot more of a high value woman, and just a lot more in your power instead of just rambling on and on and on because you're trying to fill the silence and you're nervous about like, oh no, we're being too quiet. I'm not saying enough. And you also kind of disclose things that you shouldn't disclose when you are talking out of nervousness, maybe things that he hasn't earned the right to know yet. You know what I mean? Let it be a slow feeder. Let it be a slow drip of a process. Drag it out. Have fun with it, you know? And another really interesting way to kind of take the pressure off of like, oh, this is the guy I want and it has to work out. Literally just treat it as an experiment. Implement these tips that I'm giving you and just like, who cares if it works? If it doesn't, this guy is an experiment and just see if it works, the things that I give you. But just be careful because he might fall in love with you. Talking about feelings to a man is going to feel like work. They do not discuss feelings the way that we do. You do not want to ask them, hey, how do you feel about this relationship? What are we? Where do you see it going? Watch his actions. His actions are the ones that tell you. Again, remember, men communicate with actions, not words. His actions will tell you where it's going. His actions will tell you what are you. His actions will tell you is he investing in you romantically or is he just taking you for granted and you feel these things again let any insecurity that you have about the relationship be your guide forcing him to talk about feelings all the time will not only make you seem needy it will eventually make him lose respect for you and when he loses respect he'll pay even less attention to your feelings men want respect women want love again you have to take it from their psychology and they will love you as much as they respect you. You know what I mean? In the beginning, the only thing you need to pay attention to is whether he keeps coming around because he'll only be able to suspend or hide his emotions for so long. So easiest dating advice ever, don't do anything. If he comes around and if you want to spend time with him, you say yes, but you do not drive that boat at all. The only thing you can control is your dignity, whether you say yes or no to things, and again, let him be the pursuer. It's in his DNA. Men treat women the way they treat other men. They play it cool with you because they don't want to appear weak or desperate. So just something to keep in mind. Just know that like, if he's treating you like one of the guys, it's probably because he does not want to show you that he's interested in you. The only solution to that is to treat them the same way that they treat each other, is by actions or no actions. You're not going to talk your way into a relationship with a man. The element of surprise, both inside and outside of the bedroom, is important to men and it adds to the excitement. So literally, they don't always want to know exactly to a T what's going on. And spontaneity is really good for both people. Of course, as women, we like to have things planned. It takes us a long time to get ready, to gear up for a date. But the element of surprise can really keep things fun, spicy, whether you're already married in a long-term committed relationships. But like surprise your partner. Do something for them that they wouldn't expect. Just find ways to surprise your partner. Trust me, it'll pay off. Don't always do the same thing over and over in the bedroom. Vary it so that it doesn't become a predictable routine. And even more so, people think this is so unsexy and, oh, I don't want to do that. But truly, when you get into a longer relationship and that initial quote-unquote spark is gone, and I hate saying that because the spark does come back in waves, but you do have to be intentional about connecting intimately with your partner. You can't just expect it to always happen spontaneously and the stars are going to align and you're both going to be in the mood at the same time and it's going to be an awesome experience. A lot of the times, it takes some scheduling. It takes some conscious effort to be like, hey, I want to connect with you. This is how I feel close to you. And hey, it looks like we haven't done it in a while. How about we plan a date night and, you know, this is what we're going to do. A lot of people are like, hey, that's not sexy, that's not fun, I just want it to happen in the moment. Well, guess what? Life comes around and you get busy and that doesn't always happen. So be intentional. For those of you who are wondering about how to maintain the spice, you just got to be intentional about it like everything else in your life. 
if you stop going to the gym and stop consciously making time and effort for it, you're going to see your body change in a way that maybe you don't want it to change. Same thing with your relationship. If you just kind of let it run and don't consciously make time in your life to maintain it, especially by way of physical intimacy, it's also going to derail and you both will probably be looking outside of the relationship for some satisfaction, which nobody really wants. Most men tend to disrespect a woman who appears too malleable. Yeah, they'll take advantage of her, but they don't respect her, and they'll just use her and take her for granted. She's so malleable. She is so easy to control and manipulate. And quite honestly, I believe this is why older men who have no business going for women 20 years younger than them, that's why they do it. It's not even about the youth or the physicality of it. It's because they know that the younger girls are so green and so naive that they will never stand up for themselves and that the guy can do whatever he wants to them and she will never keep him in check. Now, there are certain cases where a big age difference really works for a man and woman, but they're both on the same maturity level and the guy is not taking advantage of the younger woman. I just see a lot more cases where a guy will be like, yeah, you know, I just want to be around the college campus just to be around the younger girls, and he's like 45. Mm -mm. He doesn't respect any of those girls. He's just trying to think what he can get out of them. So don't be afraid to stand up for yourself or speak your mind. It will not only earn his respect, in some cases it will even turn him on. Men often automatically assume that, excuse my language, that a b woman will be more assertive in bed and that a nice girl will be more timid. So if you're standing up for yourself and you can take a joke and you can retort back with a joke and you can really say, hey, that's not happening, they're already fantasizing about you and your sexuality more so than someone who's super timid and agreeable. He will never respect you as being able to hold your own unless you can stand on your own two feet financially. Now, the goal with all soft girlies is that eventually we want to be taken care of by a provider, right? But like I said in the last episode, at the beginning, it's very important to not be super dependent on him. Yes, let him come your way, let him pay for dates, but don't demand that of him. Show him that you can also buy yourself nice things here or there, and you also treat yourself with utmost respect. You pay for your appointments, you really treat yourself like a queen, like a princess, and then that will turn the gears in his head that, okay, like she can do this for herself, but I would rather she didn't let me pay for all of that. You also have to show him that you won't accept mistreatment. Like I said, they will try you, they will test you, they will see what they can get away with. It's just in human nature. When you don't accept mistreatment and if you call him out on his behavior, then he will respect you. When a man views a woman as a little girl or a sister he has to take care of, the passion diminishes. He's just not going to be attracted to that. He doesn't want to make love to his sister, you know? He wants to conquer a woman. He wants to replace everything in her life with himself, you know? So the ability to choose how you want to live, the ability to choose how you want to be treated are the two things that will give you more power than any material object ever will, okay? When you choose how you live, when you choose how you want to be treated, those are things that nobody can take away from you and those are the standards that they have to raise themselves to meet. If any relationship of any kind, in friendships, in partnerships, in work, in love relationships, if one person feels that the other person isn't bringing anything to the table, he or she will begin to disrespect that person, no matter how you put it. And financial neediness is no different than emotional neediness. In both instances, he can still get the feeling that he has 100% hold on you. To be honest, I do feel like this is actually the reason why a lot of men, despite how much they complain that women want to be taken care of financially, they still go out there and pursue high-paying careers and high-paying salaries, not only because of the status that it gives them in the world, but because they want to financially control things. If you have money, you have power. If you can hold finances over a woman's head, what can she say to you? She can't leave you, this or that. So a lot of men do control women with their money. So that's why it's very, very important to establish in the beginning that you will not be controlled with their money. You cannot be bought. It's only their actions and their respect for you that can win you over. And like I said before in the previous episode, once you are convinced that he has pure intentions, has a good heart and truly loves you for who you are, then you can kind of slowly open up and let him take over more and more of the taking care of you part, 
you know, because you don't want to be left stranded by a guy who, like, the minute that he's pissed off, he removes everything, and there you are with no apartment, no car, and no job, you know? So that's why it's very, very important. And regardless of how pretty a woman is, looks alone will not sustain his respect. For every hottest Instagram girl out there, there's a dude that is sick of her, okay? <laughs> that is very important to, to remember. And while guys fall for looks a lot of the times, they eventually get caught up in a woman who's not a very good person, who's only using them for their money. So appearance may pull him in, but it is your initial independence, your amazing life, your incredible friends, your awesome activities that you're part of that will keep him turned on and wanting to pursue you. In all areas of life, people will show you they have self-respect simply by virtue of the fact that they want to carry their own weight. There's a lot of moocherellas out here. They want everybody to pay for their drink, pay for their food, pay for all of their experiences. Like they're just jumping from person to person to person who can provide that for them. But nobody respects these types of people. If you can carry your own weight, if you can show up and do your part, you're going to get respect in all senses of the word. You're going to get respect at work. You're going to get respect in your family. You're going to get respect in your love relationships as well as your friendships because people aren't going to see you as a moocherella. Another point, the more independent you are of him in the beginning, the more interested he will be. The more you rely on him in the beginning, the easier it's going to be for him to be pushed away. If you're making it too obvious that you're excited to get something, some people will be tempted to dangle a carrot in front of your face. So don't ever be tripping over yourself to be super excited about what he's promising. And trust me, I know. As soon as you meet a man, you're talking, you're vibing. Within one week, he's like, let's plan a getaway. Let me fly you out here. Let me fly you out there. And then you girls, you're just like, your ears perk up. And you're like, yes, please, let's go take me to Miami. I can't wait, blah, blah, blah. Then he's able to dangle that in front of your face because he sees that that gets you excited, that gets you riled up. But honestly, like I keep saying, hold your ground. Just be like, yeah, you know what? That sounds fun. Maybe down the road when we know each other a little better. And when you alter the routine that you're in, you not being there is what will make him come around. I already made this point, but men don't respond to words. What they respond to is no contact. Just think about it. How many guys that you're literally not interested in keep hounding you, trying to communicate with you? It seems like the less that you respond, the more they're coming. So just apply that to the guys that you actually do like. And I know it's hard. It's so hard to not talk as much as you want to the guy you like or not be all up in his energy energy all the time and it goes against all the instincts that we have when we're in love but truly that is where you start to see the difference another thing is don't give a reward for bad behavior men are like dogs are you going to reward bad behavior for a dog that's like peeing all over your carpet when it knows it's not supposed to are you going to go like oh good boy come here do some more of that no you literally just ignore that and if he brings it up just say like yeah I didn't like that that's not going to work for me they're going to respect that you stood up for something that you don't want happening to you. He simply is not going to respect a woman who automatically goes into overdrive to please him. Yes, he might take advantage of that, but that's not going to make him respect you. That's not going to make him want to pursue you. That's not going to make him want to commit to you for a long, long relationship. If he doesn't give you a time, girlfriend, you don't have a date. If there's not clear plans made, let's put these men into planning mode because somehow they've flipped the switch on us and they have us planning everything and doing all of that work. No, no. If he doesn't plan anything, it's not happening. Make him plan the restaurant, make him plan the time, make him plan the flowers that he has to stop and get for you. Again, this truly makes men feel like you're not being mean to him. You're literally just helping him step into his masculinity of planning, providing, doing things that he's biologically wired to do. And then the love and respect just comes so much more easily from that. Often the best way to adjust or fix a problem is by not letting him know it's being fixed. When you alter your availability or change a predictable routine, it will mentally pull him back in. 
Art of Seduction. Everybody knows this book. You've all read it. But it's the unpredictability that keeps people looped in. I'm not saying you have to go crazy and like be the joker and just go off the walls all the time, never let him know it's coming. But I'm just saying, if things are getting a little stagnant and you can feel him pulling away, just switch it up a bit. Do something he doesn't expect. And that's going to pull him back in. A little tip that matters in relationships, it matters in work and partnerships, friendships, you can get away with saying much more with humor than you can with a straight face. With a straight face, people tend to overthink it. They're like, oh, this person's actually serious. But if you put things in a light, joking manner, you can really slip things in that you truly mean and it won't come across as brazen. A man feels that he's won or conquered a woman when she eats out of the palm of his hand, at which point he begins to get bored. So honestly, if you're in it for a long-term relationship, this is a good reason to apply this tactic too. Of course, there is a different love and security in marriage, different commitment, but at the end of the day, we got to keep motivating our men to work for us. Otherwise, they get bored. They become complacent. They become the pudgy guy on the couch that isn't necessarily driven to go and make moves at his work or in his business or really prove himself as a man. The happiest men are not with the wives who nag them, but with the wives who, through their actions, inspire them to do more, to accomplish more, to grow themselves. And that can only be done through actions. The best way you can do that is by setting a good example for him, by being so disciplined, by being so in your own dignity and strength, then that causes him to then become the man worthy of being with you. The tension that arises with a woman who's in her goddess energy is that she gives him a subtle feeling of danger. He feels slightly unsure because she is never in the palm of his hand. So he's always kind of nervous to lose her. And he has to work towards keeping her, right? Men value things that they have to work to maintain. If he's putting in hours and hours of his time on his car fixing it, always taking care of it, making sure it's going through the wash every single week. It hasn't a speck of dust on it. He's going to value that car so very much. And you just have to think of yourself as objects that are valuable to them and how much time and effort they put into it. How much time and effort does he put into his stupid fantasy football league? Exactly. Make him put that much time and effort into you. And then soon enough, you'll be more important than the football. A yes woman who gives too much sends the impression that she believes in the man more than she believes in herself. Men view this as weakness, not kindness. They don't operate on kindness. Of course, they want a kind-hearted woman, you know, with morals, a woman that cares about animals and the children and the elderly, but you're not going to win him over by all this kindness that you show him. And if you're constantly saying yes to every single request... Again, you're just being taken for granted. He just knows he has you right there anytime he needs something. So ladies, be an independent thinker at all times and ignore anyone who attempts to define you in a limiting way. All right? Truly powerful people don't explain why they want respect. They simply just don't engage with others who don't give it to them. So to leave off the tips, the most attractive quality of all, you guys, is dignity. No matter what you're doing, no matter who you're dating, maintain your dignity. Just be like, do I actually want to be treated like this? Is this making me feel insecure? Is this taking over my life? And put your foot down and say, this is bad behavior. I'm not standing for it. Trust me, raising that bar is only going to attract men into your life and relationships into your life that fit the bill. To leave you off with a little story about how Sam and I met... This was actually after a, you know, several mm, kind of dates and flings that just really were not working out for me. And I also was doing all the wrong things. I was nagging the guy. I was initiating dates. I was like, why aren't you doing this, this, that, and the other for me? And they were like, uh-uh, who is this girl demanding so much of me? So when I had the chance to meet Sam, I had to go against all of my ingrained instincts, you guys. It wasn't, it wasn't easy. It was very, very rough, but I knew that, hey, Lena, if you want this to work out with this guy that you think is so incredible, you cannot do things the way that you've done them before. You just can't. And as much as it sucks and as much as it truly just goes against everything you know, you have to do it if you want a different result. What's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result. So the first thing that 
led to me meeting my husband was I had to make some changes within me. I had to really check myself. Alina, do you, even you respect yourself? Do you hold yourself to a high standard? How can you hold a man to a high standard if you don't hold yourself to a high standard? So <laughs> Sam and I met in school. We were both at Loma Linda University, and there's a lot of schools in Loma Linda University. There's a school of nursing, the school of medicine, school of pharmacy, school of dentistry, school of allied health professions, basically anything healthcare related that you can imagine. The only problem was that all of these schools and programs are very confined to their own cohort. So my entire class was all girls. I really was not getting the chance, even though I was going to school events and going to the library, going to the church events, I just was not meeting people. And the thing about Loma Linda is, I'll, I'll give you guys the secret, it's like very clicky. People who are there, they're not very welcoming to newcomers. They have their established groups. Most of them have lived in San Bernardino Valley forever. The other ones are usually foreign exchange students, so they already have their, their culture and their own groups on campus. So I was a little down about the fact that I, you know, I'm in college and I'm just not meeting my husband, honestly. And lo and behold, I was an RA in the girls' dorm. Again, all girls' dorm, really no chance to meet any guys because everybody's so focused on their programs and their education. But I made a friend in the dorm, and that was my husband's sister. One time I was on the dating apps. I'll come clean to you guys. I was on the dating apps, and I was just like, I want to see who's on campus. Are there even any good options here? And I saw him and swiped right, and we matched. And then I took a closer look, and I was like, oh, my God. He looks a little bit like my friend. And then I zoomed in on his white coat, and what do you know? Same last name. And I put two and two together, and I was like, okay, they're siblings. They have to be. This dating app was Bumble. And with Bumble, the girl has to make the first move. So if the girl doesn't message the guy, it just doesn't go anywhere, which I think is a great feature because Tinder has a lot of creeps, and you have to really sift through a lot of unwanted messages. So I messaged him. I don't remember what I said, but I was just like, hey, are you a Loma Linda student? What do you do? Blah, blah, blah. He didn't respond to me. And I was like, oh my God, there's a 24 hour window and I just need to see what's up. So I was so nervous and I asked his sister, I was like, oh my God. So here's the thing. I think I matched with your brother on this app. He hasn't responded. Can you vet for him? Is he chill? Is he like a good person? And she's like, oh yeah, actually let me reach out to him. I honestly think you guys would be pretty good together. Let's see about that. Then he texts me, and it just went from there. The first few texts that we had, he was so funny. He was absolutely cracking me up, and I just loved already that he had a really interesting energy and could crack jokes that weren't disgusting and just truly was making me laugh. And I completely held off of making any sort of first moves or plans with him, and sure enough, he came around, and he was like maybe a week into talking. He said, hey, Honestly, it wasn't even a week. It was like three days. What am I saying? It was like three days of talking and texting. He said, hey, would you like to have dinner with me? And I was like, yeah, this is my availability. I'll be ready at so-and-so time. He's like, okay, I'll come pick you up. And it was so funny, the story of our first date. Uh, I was getting ready for our date. It was about like 6 p.m. on a Wednesday night. And I was like so nervous because this guy was just so handsome and just really seemed really cool. And I was like, Alina, do not mess this up. You can't miss this one now. You've gone through so much. You can't lose this one. Of course, so much pressure for the first date. But I'm getting ready and the fire alarms start going off in the dorm. And I'm like, damn it. The RAs which I was one, always have to be present for the fire alarms, even if it's a drill, which every single time it was a drill. We never had a real fire. So I kind of knew what was going on, but the RAs have to be present and check in all the residents. But I also knew that if an RA isn't there, then other RAs kind of take over of checking for your hall. So I snuck out with all of these fire alarms blaring. I snuck out of a secret exit and I came around the dorm and I was literally walking towards his car with like fire trucks flashing bright red and white behind me. It was raining. It truly felt like a scene out of a movie. I walked up to him, you know, we said hello, and I was like, hey, I need to get my wallet from my car. I'll be right back. So I got my wallet from my car. I got in his car and 
just already the vibe was incredible with him. I think I fell in love with him at that moment for sure. And he drove us to this fondue place in downtown Redlands. And (laughs) I had spilled my drink over the balcony that we were sitting at accidentally I kind of like pushed my drink and it spilled over and he was just like oh it's fine I'll spill my drink too and it was just really sweet because he didn't allow me to feel embarrassed he just was ready to put himself on that same level and that was our first date and that's how we met we discovered that our birthdays are right adjacent to each other so I'm August 15 he's August 16 and honestly from there it just it just went. This was right before Christmas break, so I was going to be leaving for Spokane to spend the Christmas break with my family, as I always did. He was very, very sweet. He sent me off with a gift and was like, hey, when you come back from the airport, I'll be here to pick you up. And truly, for three weeks... We somehow hung on texting and he, we had our first phone call too, where we talked till five o'clock in the morning. You guys know what that's like when you're in love, you can't get enough. And to be honest, we were both quite surprised that we maintained our communication throughout three weeks of not seeing each other. And when I got back, he said, hey, nothing has kept my attention as much as you have. And Sam was in a very rigorous program. He had finished dental school. He had worked for a year, but he had come back to do a three-year specialty in oral implantology. So he was booked and busy, but he was like, girl, like, you just keep my attention so well. And to be quite honest with you guys, the secrets are all because of these tips and tricks that I shared with you in these last two episodes. Like I said, I really had to go against the grain of everything that I've ever known or done, but it really left me with an incredible husband, a man who is a provider in his masculine energy. And yeah, I really hope you guys can apply these concepts and I hope you enjoyed these cuffing season episodes. We have some exciting guests coming up that you guys should be on the lookout for. And I will see you next week, my beautiful starlings. Thank you as always for listening.